How about now? Testing, one, two, three, testing. Okay. Thank you all for your patience. We'll be starting shortly. Good evening, it is now six o'clock. My name is Mrs. Patricio, Rianne Patricio. I'm the head of school at Green Run Collegiate. I'm here to answer any questions or clarifications you need um, pertaining to the fall of school year. Um, if you have any questions, Ms. Waters is helming the chat room and between her and I, we will strive to answer your questions to the best of our capabilities. In order to access the chat room, you will need to be able to log into a YouTube account. So if you already have a YouTube account, please sign in. And if you don't, please subscribe to one so that you can access it. Special thanks to Mr. Staples who made all of this happen. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with give, providing you all an overview between the differences of Virtual Learning Center, um, which is option two, as well as face-to-face, -face, which is option one. So face-to-face, -face, option one, and Virtual Learning Center, option two, will start in the virtual realm, no matter what you choose at the start of the school year, which is on September 8th. For the face-to-face, if we are in the yellow phase, then elementary school um, students, sixth graders and ninth graders will have the capability of coming back to school if families choose face-to-face. -face. The rest of the grade levels on face-to-face, -face, whether it's seventh and eighth grade, as well as grades 10 to 12, will be entering school or will have the opportunity to enter school um, once we hit the green zone. Students who choose option two, the virtual learning center, will have to stay in the virtual learning center for the entire first semester, or because we are going with a four by four schedule, we are now changing the terminology from first semester to first term. So for the entire first term, those students in the virtual learning center will have to stay there for the first term. Come second term, they will have the opportunity to choose option one instead, should they wish to do so. For option one, um, the guarantee is that you will have all Green Run Collegiate teachers and be surrounded with Green Run Collegiate students. And you will have a consistent um, implementation of the IB curriculum. We can't necessarily guarantee that within the virtual learning center at this moment in time. The course offerings are being finalized um, depending on how many, how many students and families choose option two. Now, with the majority of our teachers um, choosing to stay in the building once we hit the yellow zone or the green zone, that means the course offerings for IB um, may be may be scarce um, in the virtual learning center. So if you have concerns and wanting and want to receive an IB education, I would 
ask you to please contact um, the office. We are open from eight to five tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day to choose your options. And um, I, I would suggest not to call at five o'clock to call at 430 um, because we do close at five o'clock. We now have a question from Sandy Beach about what does a four by four mean? And that's a great question, Sandy, because four by four is, this is gonna be the first year um, the school division is going to implement a four by four schedule. A four by four schedule essentially means that students take four classes, three to four classes, the first term every day. And then that is the equivalent of a year. So every day they go attend four classes. And at the end of that first term, they get a grade for that course. And then after that end of first term, they are done with those three to four classes. At the start of the second term, they start a new set of three to four classes. And so then they take all that term to every day going on the new set of those three to four classes and the end of that second term, they get a new set of grades for those three to four classes. The justification as to why Virginia Beach went four by four is because we strongly um, believe that this will lessen the load for students, the workload for students, especially since we're starting virtually, as well as the workload of teachers. Teachers will have less um, students work to grade students to monitor during this time um, of the pandemic doing that and also students would have less work to do because instead of focusing on seven to eight classes or six to eight classes throughout the entire school year, they're only focusing on three to four classes on, um, one term at a time. And the terms are similar to a semester in, term, um, in relation to duration. So a term lasts the same time as a semester However, the difference between a term is that you complete three or four courses entirely within that term. And Ms. Waters is exactly right. It is very similar to a college schedule. So once again, I want to emphasize that if your priority um, for going to Green Run Collegiate is to have your children receive an IB education, I would strongly encourage you to contact the main office so that we can talk about your options. Um, so class time is not longer with a 4 by 4 schedule, but they are seen more frequently. So that instead in an A and B schedule like we had last year, you would see that course all year long every other day. With a four by four schedule, you're going to see that class every day, but through the duration of um, 36, no, 18 weeks, because 18 weeks equals one term. Champlain DAV 20, so students will transition with other students in virtual learning, and those students may be Green Run Collegiate students, and those students may not be Green Run Collegiate students. So those students who are opting to, um, to the virtual learning center, they will either be with fellow Green Run Collegiate colleagues or with colleagues from the entire school division, because the virtual learning center is its, its own school. Now they will be enrolled in both Green Run Collegiate as well as the Virtual Learning Center, um, but they will be, they will have colleagues from all over the city of Virginia Beach, as well um, as and like more and likely Green Run Collegiate, possibly one or two classes. I want to thank you for your time today and coming here. I know we we are doing we did this yesterday. We're doing this today, and we wanted to make sure that we are providing you every opportunity to address your questions during this time because we know that this time has been very difficult. It's been difficult for for everybody, for all of our stakeholders. But the one thing that that is true about Green Run Collegiate is that we are a family and that we stick through we stick together as a family through good times and through bad and we want to make sure that we are able to provide you with 
the best information or the most information that you need in order to make the best decision for you. And Champlain DAV20, I'm not exactly sure. I hope I answered your question. I'm not sure if I have. Um, we, I could interpret your question another way. Is like, how will students transition back with other GRC students from virtual learning? So I, I'm assuming that I could also interpret that question as to when students come back from virtual learning center, how can we, um, how can we immerse them in the GRC way in Green Run Collegiate Community and Culture? And I would say that it, you know, depending on when they return, whether it's the second term or whether it's at the start of the new school year, we definitely need to consider. We definitely need to consider creating a transition program for our students, not necessarily for the new school year, because we do have a transition program for that. But I think it's a great idea to think about. Okay, to what extent do we need a transition program for our students who are coming from the virtual learning center at the end of first term and coming back to us at Green Run Collegiate full time at the start of the second term? And so, even though I don't have specific details about that, I do think that it's a great idea to, to keep in mind and to, to solidify plans in place um, for that. Sandy Beach, um, about your classes, about cores with the electives, it really depends on the availability of the classes as well as the availability of the teachers at that time. And so, although we want to be intentional, we would like to, to ensure that students had a mixture of core and electives during the first term and the second term. Um, I can't guarantee that because it depends on how many students are taking um, which classes. So for example, if we have a lot of students taking um, theater class, but maybe not a lot of students taking um, French, and I'm just using these two random electives, it could be that French is only possible in second term and not necessarily both terms. So it really depends on how many people have enrolled in electives to determine whether we can have a mixture of core and electives because all students have to have, uh, you know, the core classes are requirements for earning a high school diploma, both from IB and from the Virginia Department of Education. So for better or worse, they have to take priority than the electives. And then depending on how many students enroll in what elective determines the frequency of that class. Hi, Ms. Cannon. Um, when students are in the yellow or green zone, will they be changing classes or staying in the same room with the teacher's travels? Um, that decision hasn't been solidified yet. I do know that we're having conversations about both scenarios, Ms. Cannon, and so I wish that I could give you a, a solidified answer. The best answer I can give you during this time is that we are talking about both scenarios. And, you know, I, I prefer one scenario over the other, but it just, it really depends on what our numbers look like come the end of the day tomorrow, as well as um, teacher availability. And so we have to take those factors and um, make sure those factors are taken into consideration. And then from there, we'll make our final decisions. I'm just waiting for other questions, if they come up. I hope you all are excited about tomorrow. We start our on the rise transition tomorrow and, and then end on Thursday. We have, um, what health changes, 
Thank you, Chaplain DAV20. What health changes are in place to help students return? Um, so I'm trying to, would you clarify as to what you mean by health changes? Do you mean the metrics that determine the yellow and green zone? Would you want me to go into more detail about that? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's what you want me to talk about. So I'll start talking about that. And then from there, um, from there, please just let me know if, I, if, I'm, I, if I'm answering your question correctly. So for yellow zone and for for red zone for and green zone, for first of all, we are in the red zone. We are nowhere in the health metrics to to say that we are, you know, we are about to go back to school or we're allowing our students to go back to school and our teachers to go back to school. As of right now, it is just not safe. We are firmly in the red zone. Um, when we are in the yellow zone, I believe that, um, well, first of all, it takes two factors. And if you um, give me a little patience real quick, I want to make sure I have the, the plan with me. And I do keep it outside my office so that I can refer to it. So in order to determine where we are for the yellow and the red zone, it's based on, first of all, the Eastern region. And the justification for choosing the Eastern region is because we have a variety of employees that come from the 757, all over from 757, whether it's the Eastern Shore, Suffolk, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, and Chesapeake are basically interchangeable um, in the sense that people go um, in and out of those cities at any given time in, in any given day. And so in order to determine where we are with the health metrics, we use the Eastern region. And the two primary data points that the school division is using is one, the percent of COVID-19 test positivity rate for the past seven days, as well as the number of cases per 100,000 per week. And so in order to be considered in the yellow, we would have to be, we would have to have a COVID-19 test positivity rate anywhere between five to 10%. In addition, we would have to have anywhere in between 26 and a half to 264 cases per 100,000 people per day. Not only do we have to have those health metrics in place, but it has to be in health metrics for the next two weeks. And then green is 5% less positivity rate, as well as less than 26.5 cases per day within the entire Eastern region. And that has to be over the course of two weeks as well. So thank you for making it, for making clarifications. As of right now, there haven't, there hasn't been any final decisions about barriers at desks. I did just come back from viewing the workshop of this from the school board and they are talking about, um, the possibility of having barriers on the desks. So in terms of, of that decision, that decision has yet to be made. In regards to your second question about the masks going to be mandatory, yes, the masks are going to be mandatory for both teachers, adults that are visiting the building, as well as students. And from what I saw from the school board workshop that happened just 17 minutes ago, I believe that each child and each teacher and staff member will be provided three masks, or the intention is that they are provided three masks per person and per student. So those are some of the health um, mitigations that are planning to be in place by the time students come back to school and also teachers come back to school. I know that there are several others that are in the planning um, phase right now, um, but I, I don't want to get ahead of myself and tell you that these things are going to happen. Those decisions have yet to be finalized. The only one that I know is finalized is the one that is inside this 30-page plan, which is about the, the mandatory use of masks inside the building from anybody that enters it. 
Ms. Edwards has questions about, are there concerns about students in the DP program being able to keep up in the virtual environment and what support will they have to help them? You know, the DP program is, is rich, um, it is complex, it is meant to provide students the skills to be problem solvers and critical thinkers. And so I, I would be I would be lying to you if I if I didn't say that there weren't concerns. There are concerns about um, students in the DB program being able to keep up in the virtual environment. With that said, I am confident in our teachers and I am confident in their ability to provide our students every opportunity to, to ensure that they get the help and assistance that they need in order to prepare for these exams. And so we've had in the years past, um, Scholar Central that was available to students after school, two days a week. And we are in the planning phases as to what that looks like in the virtual world as to after they complete their classes with the time that's given to us set forth by the school division, what does Scholar Central look like at the start of the school year? And so we are talking about that and we are making plans for that. In addition, I have every faith in our teachers and staff that they will provide our students with the, with the time and resources that they need in order to be prepared for the IB exams and assessments. It is going to be difficult, but I would argue that every I would argue that everything right now is is difficult. And if we do this together, we will be successful. Um, Ms. Beach is talking about um, are there going to be any sports or club activities, or will that resume once school is at regular status? Right now, I know that there are plans, and I, I hate to tell you that there are plans, but that is the reality and that's the truth, that there are plans to figure out what does after-school activities and what does the SEA look like during um, during this time when school is, is, is virtual. And those plans are being made by the Office of Student Leadership. And we did talk about that just recently, like as you know, honestly, today, as to what do SCA looks um, elections look like in the virtual world, and what do school activities look like in the virtual world? So, although I cannot share with you any details because those details haven't been finalized, I do want to reassure you that we are having discussions about this, so that ideally within the next week or two, or maybe maybe a week or two is too soon, but ideally within maximum. Uh, with the maximum time a month, I can come back to you and provide you an update on it. Um, Ms. Gardner says, ask, if my, my child selects face-to-face, -face, will the teacher she starts with virtually be the same teacher she has face-to-face? -face? Also, will the curriculum be face-to-face, -face, the same face-to-face -face, um, virtually? So that's a loaded question. Um, I'll try my best to, to explain it in a way that, that makes sense. So whether your child chooses option two or option one, everyone is starting virtually. So we are starting virtually this year, whether you choose option two or option one. Now, going to the heart of your question, Ms. Gardner, um, students who choose option two will not have the same teachers as option one. So option two, which is a virtual learning center, some of your child's students and your child's teachers may be Green Run Collegiate and they may not be. If your child chooses face-to-face, -face, all of her teachers will be Green Run Collegiate teachers. And then also when we are allowed back in the school building, our students and our teachers are allowed to be back in the school building together, those teachers in option one will be the same teachers in the school building. That won't be the case for option two for virtual learning center. So essentially your, your students, teachers in the virtual learning center will be a mix of, well, most likely, or maybe, I, I can't be 100% sure, but there is a likelihood that it'll be a mix of Green Run Collegiate student, um, teachers, as well as other Virginia Beach City public school teachers. Whereas if they choose option one, their teachers will all be Green Run Collegiate IB teachers. The curriculum will be different 
from students who are taking face-to-face -face and also students who are taking the Virtual Learning Center. The Virtual Learning Center teachers are not trained in, in the IB curriculum. Um, there are not a lot of teachers who are trained in the IB curriculum. And so I can't guarantee that all course offerings in Virtual Learning Center will, will provide you with all of your IB classes, maybe one or two. I can guarantee that all of your classes in face-to-face um, -face for Green Run Collegiate, that will be IB curriculum. With that said, we still have to wait until we're either in the yellow or the green zone in order to determine whether our students and our teachers can come back safely in the school building. Ms. Cannon, lunchtime will look different than it has been in years past. Social distancing will definitely be implemented. We are looking at and researching different models, but we haven't finalized a specific model that I can, I can safely um, publicize right now. But I can reassure you that we're looking at different models of what lunch looks like. It will definitely not look like one lunch that we've had in, in the past two years. We have six more minutes until we end our Q&A session for tonight. I just want to remind you that we have one more Q&A session left. It'll be tomorrow, um, same YouTube channel here at six o'clock to 6.30. Um, if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact the main office, 648-5393, between the hours of eight to five. I would suggest to make your phone call starting at 4.30 and not necessarily five o'clock. That would, um, we would be very grateful for that. I'm here to answer your questions. Ms. Waters is facilitating the chat room to answer your questions. We're here to help you make the best informed decision you can about your child's education. And we want to help you get there. Oh, I'm so excited that you got your sign and your goodie bag today. I wish we had um, more pictures, but I know that for myself, when I delivered the, um, the welcome packages, most of our students were in their pajamas, <laughs> so they wouldn't let me take pictures of them. <laughs> but it was great getting to know the class of 2024 and getting to know um, our new students. And I would say, Ms. Waters, I I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure that you would say the same. It was really great to, and really great and refreshing and provided a lot of much needed perspective for me in terms of why we do the work that we do here. Because sometimes you can lose sight on it, especially during times like this. I love that your mom made you get dressed. One family actually mowed their lawns um, so that they could post their sign on their yard. I thought that was great. I am very grateful for you all to come here today and to really ask these questions because these questions are meant to be asked and I try my best, we try our best to answer them to the best of our capability. Right now we're living very much in the gray and um, I know that can be incredibly frustrating. I know it's frustrating for myself. And so I, I really appreciate that you all are very patient with us and with the school division 
in terms of um, how we're all dealing with this. It's the first time that any of us are really going through this, but as long as we go through it together, we'll get to the other side of this. I have every faith that we will get to the, every, um, to the other side of this, as long as we do it together. Mr. Staples has just texted me. He is our techno our technology guru admin team member. And he has asked me to remind you all to please subscribe to our media outlets as well as this YouTube page. So please make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube page. Press that red button right there, as well as making sure that you follow us at both our Instagram and our Twitter accounts. And our Twitter and our Instagram accounts are the same. Our handle is GR Collegiate. Is there, Ms. Edwards, I see that you're asking, is there a need to make changes to the IB program chosen based on performance and what options are there? Um, I am not exactly sure what you mean by that and I apologize for it because I, I can interpret it a couple of different ways. Um, So first, I, I want to tell you that the three IB pathways still exist during this time of Corona, and that is um, the diploma um, diploma route for a student striving to earn not only the high school diploma, but also the IB diploma. Students who are striving to earn the career-related certificate, that is for students who um, have been accepted to Advanced Technology Center, Technical and Career Education Center, or the Governor School of the Arts and as well as, um, or, no, the, those are the three options, and also decide to complete the core components of the career-related certificate. The third pathway is just to take IB classes for possible college credit, depending on the score you receive at the end of the two years. And so those options have not changed. I describe the diploma candidate route um, as, gearing towards this, the student who wants to know everything about everything. And then the, the course candidate route is for the student who wants to know everything about some things. And then the career related certificate route is for that um, student who really wants to get into a specific field right away and just immerse themselves in that field. And so those options have not, have not changed. T-Girl, I believe that ATC will be virtual as well as hands-on. I just want to make sure I can confirm that. And I do have an email about that. So ATC will be fully virtual starting September 8th, um, who, regardless of whether or not you've selected option one or option two. And then when it is safe to return face-to-face, -face, ATC will move face-to-face with the rest of the school division. Students who have selected option two have the option to remain virtual only for their core academic high school classes. While they can attend ATC face to face when it's safe to do so. And I hope that's Yes, T girl, ideally, they should be um, getting a hold of you about your um, decision and informing you about your decision. So um, just wait for that phone call. Ms. Edwards, we can talk about changing options for your child, but I think that's probably best to do um, with a personal phone call. So if you can call uh, 757-648-5393 in between the hours of eight to five. And you can, you can ask for, you know, myself, Ms. Waters, um, Mr. Staples and Ms. Miller, and we will be able, whoever is available will be able to assist you with that. Okay, everyone, it is 6.32. It's been, <laughs> I'm sorry to say this, but it has been a long day. And I promised Ms. Waters, as well as my husband, to get out of here at 6.30.
If you have any questions, we will be available via phone, email, as well as our last Q&A session tomorrow on YouTube at six o'clock. Thank you all. Have a wonderful night.